G'day everybody, welcome to another Affinity Photo tutorial. This week we're going to do a bit of a fantasy composite, the floating castle or floating islands. So as usual, let's get started. We're going to start off with this photo here. And the first photo that we're going to bring over is the picture of our stars here. So let's copy this picture here with a Command C or Control C if you are on Windows. And let's bring it over to our main picture here and Command V. Let's make the whole picture a little bit smaller with our Command minus. So we can stretch these stars all the way across our picture. Let's move them up a little bit. Command zero, and let's change the blend mode to soft light. And let's just rename that stars. Okay, so I don't want the stars on the clouds down here. So I'm just going to, on that stars layer, add a mask. Let's pick our brush over here, pick our paint brush, come over to our brushes. And in the basic, we want a nice soft brush. We wanna be painting in black and 25% is fine. I'm going to use my right and left bracket keys now to make my brush a little bit bigger. And then I'm just going to take those stars off the clouds there. Okay, there we go. That looks pretty good. So we're going to add the picture of our moon next. So we're going to come to this picture of our moon. And again, just copy that over. Command C. And I want it above the background layer here. So I just click on the background and then Command V. We've got our moon here. I'm going to change the blend mode on our moon to screen and come over to my move tool. I'm going to make the moon quite big. I'm going to turn it round so this light, I'm saying the light is coming from over in this direction. So I'm just going to rotate that, holding my shift key down as well as I rotate. So I've got the light on this side of the moon and then move it into place. And I'll put it about here. And just to get rid of this line here on the moon, I'm going to click back on the moon and back on my little blend ranges here. And just going to bring this one, source layer ranges. I'm just going to bring that one down a little bit, down to about here. Click off that and we should have got rid of most of that line there. So that looks pretty good. After we've done our moon, we're going to work on our mountain and our castle. So this is the mountain that I'm going to use. And I'm going to cut the mountain out of the background. I'm going to use the flood fill selection tool here. I'm going to drop the tolerance to 10% and then just click just near the mountain here. And that should give us a really good cutout of this mountain. As you can see, that has done a really good job. I'm just going to hit delete now, just delete. So I've just got the mountain, not the background. So Command D to get rid of those marching ants. I'm going to unlock the layer, just clicking on this lock. So it unlocks the layer, come up to my move tool, and I'm going to spin the mountain around and snap it into place. And then I'm just gonna make it a bit smaller. Going to get rid of a little bit more of the mountain. I'll use my rectangular marquee tool and I'll just mark out a section here that I don't wanna use and hit delete. Get rid of those marching ants. So I just got our mountain here and I'm gonna get rid of these straight edges here. So I'm just gonna come over here to my freehand selection tool. Just don't like those straight edges. So I'm just gonna draw sort of some squiggly lines here. Just get rid of that. Get rid of those straight edges. Let's do the same on this side. and hit delete. There we go, that looks a little bit better, not so straight. Okay, now we've got this in place, we're gonna come over to our castle now. We're gonna do the same, we're gonna use our flood fill selection tool since it's mostly sort of a very light color, but I'm going to drop the tolerance to 10% now and then click just near the castle. And that's given us a fairly good selection. Just need to grab our selection brush tool and make it a little bit bigger. Let's just tidy up those areas there. We've got a few extras. Let's zoom in a little bit. That one as well. And now we can just get rid of the bits that we don't want. Make my brush a little bit smaller. I still want to have that little house just holding my option key down. Just want that little house on the end there. Just holding my option key as I get just a little bit more of that. 
castle. We don't have to worry too much because we're gonna hide a lot of the bottom of this castle anyway. So that's not too bad. So let's just hit delete on our keyboard and got rid of that, the rest of that we don't want. Let's get rid of the marching ants with our command D or escape. And I'm just gonna copy the castle over now. Command C over to where our mountain is and command V right on top. Looks like we brought a little bit more of that castle over than what we wanted. Let's just make it a little bit smaller. Grab our erase brush tool, make our brush fairly big and let's just get rid of that. We don't want that section down there. Okay, back on our move tool, we can move our castle up and we can stretch it out a bit. Okay, I might just get rid of this little bit on the end here. I'll just use the erase brush tool, make that really small, and I'll just get rid of that end bit there. That's okay. And like I said, we're gonna hide some of this anyway, so it's not too bad. So we can now copy this over to our main picture. So let's highlight both of these layers and go Command C. We'll bring it over to our main picture, and I'm going to put it just above the background here. Command V, I'm going to make it quite big because it's going to be sort of like the focus here right in front. So that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that. I'm going to group those two together. Hold my shift key down and hit G to group. I'm just going to call this group the near island and hit enter. Okay, within this group on top of the mountain part here, I'm going to add a pixel layer right on top. And while I've got this bottom of the mountain here, I'm going to come up and go select, selection from layer. So I've got my marching ants back around the mountain here. I'm going to click onto the castle and use my color picker to pick the darkest color and activate that color. Clicking on this pixel layer, I'm gonna call that dark. I'm gonna take my brush still painting in that color that we selected and bring my flow all the way up to 100% and I'm going to paint all over the bottom of that mountain and then change the blend mode to soft light. I'm going to add another pixel layer right on top as well. I'm going to call this one light. Hit enter. Back on the castle layer, again grab our color picker and pick the lightest color in the picture out there and then activate that. Back onto that pixel layer that we called light and let's paint that light color in. And change the blend mode to multiply and we can bring that down a little bit if we want to, just a tiny bit, maybe to 50%. So now we've sort of matched the color of the castle up here to the color of the mountain. It all sort of matches now. So the next thing I'm going to do, we're back on the mountain. We've still got our selection. I'm going to come up here to select and grow shrink. I'm going to shrink that selection just a tiny little bit around the mountain and hit apply. I'm going to add another pixel layer above this and change the blend mode to overlay. Just like that, the color I'm going to pick is the light coming over from this section here, the light, and activate that color. And on that pixel layer with the blend mode overlay, see it's gonna paint on the rock there, but we don't want that. So we're going to invert the selection up here, invert the selection, and to make my brush a lot smaller and zoom in a little bit. And hopefully now we can paint that light, let's drop our flow a little bit down to 50% and we can paint some light along the edges here. A little bit dark there for those ones, but let's just paint the light along these edges. And then let's get rid of the marching ants with the command D. Drop the flow a little bit more, maybe to about 20. Fairly big brush and let's add some of that light back over here as well. Okay, command zero and have a look at that. We've got some nice light coming in there, maybe a little bit more there. So that looks pretty good. So we're gonna do the same on top of the castle here. So again, right on top of the castle, this one here, 
add another pixel layer and we're still using that same color. Let's change the blend mode to this one to overlay as well. And let's add some of that light onto the castle here. And we'll leave it fairly dark at the back. So I'm happy with that. So that's our near island all done. So let's now duplicate that with a command J. Come over here to our move tool, reduce the size command zero, and let's just make that smaller. Let's move that one right to the back. And we want that one right above, right on top. I think I'll move the near island all the way on top as well. We want it in front of everything. So let's now rename this one at the back here, the far island. So, so we've got the near island here and the far island. And we might make that just a little bit smaller again. Drop it right down a bit lower than the, this island here. Okay, so now we've got our islands in place and we've got our light on our islands, which is looking really good. We might just move this one a little bit closer. That's a bit better. Okay, what I'm going to do now is add a new pixel layer right on top. Come over here to my pen tool. Come up here to stroke. Make sure stroke is black. Use your swatches. You can choose black and make sure that the line width here is one pixel, one PT, one pixel here. On my pen tool, I'm going to click right on the corner of this island and then click and drag this one. So I've got like a loop going from one island to the other and then just click off that on the hand tool. And you can see that it's now put this line across here. So on our pixel layer, we'll move that to the top. Let's call this chain. I'm going to use my paintbrush. I'm going to use a brush that I picked up from Brushies, which is called Chain. Now, if you don't want to download the brush, that's okay. I've provided a link for a chain that you can download from Unsplash if you want to use that instead. I know some people don't like to download brushes. I'm gonna make sure my color is black. So I'm gonna hit D on my keyboard just to get it back to default. And you can see now that I've got this little chain link here. So I'm going to zoom all the way in and move it all the way over to this island here. I'm going to make that really quite small. And I can turn that around using my arrow keys. So I'm going to turn it all the way around. Now I'm going to use this line as a guide. So I'm going to start off here and just go across this line with this chain brush. And don't forget, you can use your arrow keys to keep turning it so it's following the line. And then I'm going to make it a little bit bigger each little time, just with my right and left bracket keys. Get to about here and then make the brush bigger again. And just follow that line and just make your brush a little bit bigger as you get closer to the other island. Again, I'm just using my arrow keys to turn that brush. And zoom out a little bit, move over. And on the last one here, I'm going to turn that all the way around again. And then link up that brush to there. So we've got the chain sort of big and small. We can now delete that curve that we created with our pen tool. We don't need that anymore. So command zero. So now we've got our chain going across to the other island. So on that chain, this is gonna be a very, very slight detail. I've got this picture of rust here. So I'm gonna copy it over with the command C, come over to my background and paste it right above the chain here. Use my move tool to make it quite small. And turn that round, just stretch it over the chain. And then I'm going to clip it to the chain. Like I said, it's going to be a very slight detail. And then on the chain, I'm going to add an adjustment. I'm going to add an exposure and clip that exposure just to the chain and make it a little bit darker. Like I said, it's a very subtle detail. So on that chain now, we've collapsed it all. I'm going to make a copy on my move tool. Make that a little bit smaller and I'm going to bring that over to this one. And I want to make this one look like that's going off in the distance, maybe connected to another island that we can't see. 
There we go, that looks pretty good. So we've got our islands and our chain in place now. Okay, I'm gonna bring over a picture of the clouds that I've got now, just this one here. I only want this cloud section here. So I'm gonna use my rectangular marquee tool and make a selection just of those clouds. Command C to copy, bring it over to our background picture. Right on top, Command V. So we've got our picture here. Let's make this whole picture smaller with our Command minus. I'm going to stretch this all the way down and then stretch it all the way up. And let's move it across to about there. Looks pretty good. Maybe just stretch that out a little bit more. Okay, Command zero. Let's add a mask to the clouds. Let's make sure we're on our brush tool here. Make sure we're painting in black and we want a nice soft brush. So black on our brush, flow of about 25%. Let's make our brush a little bit bigger. And now let's just paint back in our castle here, right on top and the bottom bit as well. And paint this away. Back over to this castle. Make sure we get the bottom bit. Okay, let's drop our flow to 10%. Come over here to where our chain was and let's just paint our chains back in. This one, it's like it's just going back into the distance, into those clouds. Let's go back over to white and just paint the cloud in a bit more where that join is. Okay, let's add some birds into the picture. So let's come over here to our birds, Command C, over to our background again. Let's put our birds right above the near island. So Command V, change the blend mode to multiply. Onto our move tool, let's make that really small. And I want them behind the near island, so I'm going to drag that behind. Okay, so you can see if I click off that, we've got this line around the bird. So let's click back on the birds up here to our blend options. Again, source layer ranges. Let's bring that one all the way down and then bring it in to about halfway. Click off that and you'll see that now our birds are in place. So let's make another copy, Command J, arrange, flip horizontal, and let's bring some down the bottom here as well, flying around the bottom. Those ones I might make just a little bit bigger, and the bottom ones I might make just a little bit bigger as well. And then I'll copy those, Command J, bring some up to this little far shadow or castle, I want them behind the far island there, so we can make that a bit smaller. Let's make another copy. And then bring them down to the bottom here as well. Okay, Command-0. Now the moon's not looking quite right in the picture, so I'm going to move the moon all the way up to the top. I'm going to add a mask to the moon. Grab my brush again. Flow about 25%. Still painting in black, make my brush fairly big, and I'm just going to make that moon look like it's behind the clouds there. That looks a little bit better for the moon. There we go. Okay, a couple more little things to do. Just Command minus, make that a little bit smaller. I'm going to grab my rectangular tool here, double click on my colors, and I'm going to come into a sort of a really bluey, sort of sky bluey color here. Click off that. I'm going to draw that rectangular over the whole picture. Change the blend mode to average. And then I'm going to drop that all the way down to about 20%. Let's have a look. That looks pretty good. And then an adjustment layer down here. I'm going to come down here to lens filter. Just add that on top there. Just leave it as it is, the same settings. So there we go guys, that is the floating island or floating castle in the sky composite. As you know, I always like to do a couple more little things. So I'm gonna highlight all of the layers here. Come over to layer and merge visible. 
and just to add that little bit more detail you know that I love to come over here to tone mapping click on dramatic here gives it a really dramatic look but I'm going to bring the tone compression all the way down to about 20 percent going to add some contrast just to make that look a little bit more misty maybe a little bit too much there bring it back a little bit a little bit of saturation exposure down slightly and then just click on apply and there we go everybody that is my tutorial for this week on the floating castle or floating islands i hope you have enjoyed the tutorial if you have please give me a thumbs up please consider subscribing to my channel don't forget to hit that notification bell so you know when i am uploading a new video but until next time i'll say to you stay well stay safe and i'll see you in the next video mm -hmm.